Hello everybody, welcome to this last video of our video series. In this video we will talk about our luggage system and how we made the bike as strong and as reliable as possible. So starting with the luggage system, we have here at the front a uh, front pannier rack with uh, two front panniers for our clothes, so one bag for each person. We have our tent here on top and uh, we have mounted the front pannier rack to the fork with these uh, special hose clamps. It's nice because the suspension fork normally doesn't have any mounts for a front pannier rack. Yeah. Going on, we have these uh, top tube bags and one box which we 3D printed and we uh, put some snacks in there and some quick access items like keys or wallets that's quite handy uh, here in the center we have a big frame bag for our tools especially the tools we use uh, on a regular basis and that's good because uh, the weight is nice and central on the bike that's good for handling um, here in the rear we have a special uh, rear pannier rack and in this pannier we carry uh, all our kitchen stuff we have quite a big kitchen we have four stoves a gasoline uh, or oh, we have four pots <laughs> and one gasoline stove we have cutting boards everything that you need uh, to make a nice meal and we also carry two camping chairs which is quite a luxury I think but it's very nice after a long day of riding um, come to the other side. You, this um, pannier bag we have uh, lots of special tools, so it's like this full with uh, special tools, which we normally don't need that often, but uh, we need to take them out more often than we like. And we have uh, like spare spokes and uh, voltage meter or brake fluid and also a soldering iron. We have extra plug here for soldering iron, so we can do that on the go. We carry also e-bike charger just to charge, charge the bike from the wall. And music box, just some nice, nice things. And here in our trailer we also have a lot of stuff. So we have um, one bag in the bottom for our food. We can carry... Um, food for two days easily without going to a restaurant and in this bag we carry our sleeping stuff like uh, sleeping mats, sleeping bags and they stay nice and dry inside of here and we have these straps which we made ourselves to secure all the stuff and underneath the solar panels <laughs> we also carry some stuff, a spare rim for the rear wheel, a pump and some lines to dry clothes yeah that's about all about the uh, luggage system uh, ah yeah here also we uh, modified the rear pinnae rack so we put this extension on there so that the bags are nice and low and we <laughs> cut off some stuff here so there's enough space for the trailer. Yeah, weld it by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's the luggage system. And um, now we will talk about how we made this bike as reliable as possible, which uh, was quite a challenge because um, this is a tandem bicycle and that, that's also for us uh, the biggest disadvantage of riding with a tandem bicycle because you have the load of two riders on just one bike, just two wheels, one frame, and all these parts are designed for single rider bikes normally, but um, we have to make it as strong as possible so it can survive such a long journey. So um, let's start here in the front. We uh, have upgraded the suspension fork to a heavy-duty dual-crown downhill fork 
before we had just a normal um, fork but that uh, cracked at the at the axle so we, re we replaced it with this uh, very strong fork um, next the wheels we um, just laced this wheel yesterday and uh, we have some special spokes they are butted spokes about uh, 2.3 millimeters here in this area and here near the J band 2.6 millimeters so they don't break at the J band which they sometimes do <laughs> and we have a very strong rim which is made for uh, heavy carrying bikes and just downhill use so very strong and uh, in the rear wheel we have the same spokes we uh, did a lot there so at first we had a uh, uh, the rear wheel had 2.6 millimeter spokes just normal 2.6 millimeter spokes and we thought that would last forever but after about 1000 kilometers the rear wheel uh, broke down or the, the spokes started breaking and uh, we saw some cracks at the nipple holes which was quite unfortunate uh, that was in Freiburg and there we um, bought a new rim and which is this one and we bought new spokes but there were only 2.3 millimeters that was the only thing we could get I think we were pretty happy that we found uh, 2.3 millimeter spokes in the right length and we rode with that for about 700 more kilometers and then uh, the rear wheel started breaking down again the spokes started breaking and now we uh, have a very strong rim and these butted spokes so same setup as in the front and the rear wheel is holding up uh, very good so far we are very happy with it um, another thing we we modified is the frame we here we put a lot of aluminum support in welded and uh, secured with holes clamps and we did that because we found some um, some reports where people were just traveling with a normal tandem bicycle no solar no electric and their frame cracked about here and the, the frame had the had a similar design so <laughs> we don't want that to happen and additionally we have a uh, a torque here on this axle because we have a hub motor in there and this axle somehow needs to be supported so we just put a lot of <laughs> aluminum there to make it strong and hopefully uh, survive this long journey and also the trailer is also part of the system because um, the trailer it takes away some of the forces from the bikes and puts it on this additional third wheel so um, the tandem bicycle doesn't have to carry as much and also this uh, suspension seat post is help helpful because um, the rear rider he cannot see if the bump is coming so if a bump is coming the suspension seat post takes away the impact let me take a short look on our list so we also did um, just some stuff to make it nice to ride this bicycle we have this very big uh, tire it's a Schwalbe Supermoto X which just gives us a lot of comfort and uh, also takes away some of the impacts uh, we have a very strong um, brake from Agura it's a four piston brake normally used on mountain bikes but uh, for this bike it's perfect <laughs> and with the brake rotors we have 200 millimeter brake rotors and at first we had just normal brake rotors but after a test we did just an emergency braking the brake rotor was bent like a plate <laughs> you know <laughs> and so we had to put on these floating um, brake rotors also from Magura we have this brake set up in the front and in the rear um, 
we just have some normal mud guards for protection from the dirt. Ah, yeah, and also for the um, for the assistance sensor, we chose the cadence sensor because uh, before we had a torque sensor, but that uh, proved uh, it showed to not be very reliable, wasn't stable en enough. So and uh, we want a reliable and si simple setup, so we chose just a normal cadence sensor. Um, and also we have put this very heavy uh, big uh, bike stand on there. That's also important for us because we cannot just lay the bike in the grass and it's so heavy so it needs a, a strong bike stand. Yeah, And also we have these nice um, pedals from Shimano uh, with reflectors and we chose flat pedals because uh, we didn't want to carry two pairs of shoes. We just want a, a simple setup where we only need one pair of shoes and you can take your feet off very quickly, which is convenient. So we chose uh, flat pedals. With that being said, this is the end of our video series. Uh, we hope that you found it interesting and helpful and maybe even got inspired to build uh, something similar. If yes, contact us, we are always curious. And um, we hope we could make a small contribution to the maker community because when we built this bike, we uh, researched a lot of information on the internet and that was very helpful for us. So go out there and build something. Goodbye.